I'm going to begin the program today by reading to you from 1 John chapter 2 and verse 22. It says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. I think that pretty well says it. Anybody who denies Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are false in, it, in what they're saying. They obviously are false believers, if they're believers at all. They are mixed up. They need help. And that's why you and I are here to proclaim that Jesus is the Christ. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Miss Faye, pray, please. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our Christ. You are our Savior. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. We praise you for what you've done for us, what you did on Calvary for our salvation. We thank you for your prayers that you're making intercession for us yes. right now at the right hand of the Father. We thank you for the joy of the Lord that gives us strength every day. We just ask that the anointing would be upon each of us as we delve into your word today. Let us learn a little more about how to be ready for your coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And that's the purpose of this program is to help each one of us grow in faith so that we can be better prepared to meet Jesus yes. in the air. I want to just say that God is so good. He supplies our needs and He supplies your needs so that we can meet Jesus in the air. Amen. Welcome to Revelation of the Word with host Dr. and Mrs. M. E. Neal. Folks, we are living in a world that denies who God is, who the Lord Jesus Christ is, and who the Holy Spirit is. We must not be deceived by those who adhere to platforms that are contrary to the Word of God. We must uphold the very principle of Christianity in everything that we say, everything that we do, and every place that we go. We cannot afford to miss being caught up in the air whenever Jesus calls, come on up. We do not want to be left behind. Last week we talked about the Antichrist most of all, we talked about the spirit of the Antichrist that is prevalent in the world today that's causing the deception that's going on round about us. We are filled with the spirit of Almighty God and therefore greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. So there is never a time that any of us need to bow our need, our knees to anything that's contrary to the Word of God. We must uphold the truth at all times and we together in unity as believers must march forward as a mighty army, not carrying earthly kinds of weapons, but carrying spiritual weapons. For there is a war that's in existence right now in the heavenly. Angels are fighting against demon spirits right now so that we can get our prayers through to God and God can get through to us. Victory is ours. We do not have to yield to anything less than the power of Almighty God and the plan of salvation that He has granted to us. 
But the Antichrist spirit is here now trying to make believers turn away from God. And whenever the actual Antichrist himself comes, then the majority of the people that are left here on earth during the tribulation period will yield themselves totally to the will of the Antichrist and become partners with Satan in every way. A few will remember what they were taught in Sunday school and will turn to God, but that will be few compared to the number who will be eternally lost because they listen to the spirit of the Antichrist and then the Antichrist himself. Well, Miss Fay, let's see what the Gospels has to say about believers and about the non-believers. So if you would, let's go to Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. Matthew 24, beginning with verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So we know that Jesus knew exactly what our day and time was going to be like. I mean, the Antichrist spirit has been around since the beginning of the New Testament church, so to speak, warring against the New Testament church. But the spirit of the Antichrist has increased really since 1950. The move of the Antichrist spirit has been so much more prevalent. Whenever prayer was taken out of school, Bible reading taken out of school, Ten Commandments couldn't be put on the wall of schools, abortion by the thousands upon thousands. All of that is a result of the Antichrist spirit. So think what it really will be like whenever the Antichrist himself is here on earth. Jesus said there's going to be people who do nothing but try to deceive other people. Well, we want to be the people who try to get other people saved rather than deceiving them. We want them to hear and to learn and to be filled with the truth of Almighty God. That's our job here and now. And we will be failing God if we do not share Jesus with the people that we come in contact with. Now, I don't mean going out and telling everybody, hey, you're going to hell. We don't do that. We show forth love to people. We live a life before people so that they can see the Jesus in us. That's the kind of preaching the word that I want us to do. And as we read a few programs ago, we're to be instant in season and out of season. All of the time, we are to be in some way building up the kingdom of Almighty God. Well, with all that being said, what does Mark have to say about this? Mark 13, verses 5 and 6, please. Mark 13, beginning with verse 5. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, I like to say this about that. If God says something in the Bible one time, that's important. We need to hear it, we need to receive it, we need to live by it. But if he says it twice, that makes it doubly important. And possibly even more than twice, things are repeated in the Bible to just really emphasize the importance of what God is saying. So hear what I'm saying. Folks, you will come in contact with people who will try to deceive you in fact, we have just seen that manifested in the recent months that people have been deceived, thinking that they're doing the right thing because people are telling them they're doing the right thing if they will go along with certain things. Now, I'm not going into detail. You can figure out what I'm talking about. But people have been deceived. I'm talking about even spirit field Christians have been deceived because what is being proclaimed sounds good. Everybody 
gets to do their own thing, their own way. Nobody's bossing anybody else. There are really no rules and regulations to follow. You just do whatever you want to do. That's deception. That's contrary to the word of God. Don't believe it. Don't accept it. Don't fall for it and overcome it at least in your life and if possible, overcome it in the people and lives around you, in your city, in your state, in your country, and in your world. We are to live above that knowing what the truth is and not falling for any deception. Let's move on to Luke, Miss Faith. Luke chapter 21, verse 8. Luke 21, verse 8. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. So the Antichrist spirit is trying its best to pull people away from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Antichrist according to the Apostle Paul, will be the man of lawlessness. I want to say that by, run that by you again. Paul says that the Antichrist will be the man who is without laws. Again, everybody doing their own things, writing, tearing things up, whatever. Do it. If it feels good, go for it. That's what the Antichrist will proclaim when he's here on earth, and that's what we already see manifested even today before the Antichrist is manifested in person here on earth. We are of the law of God. We must be nothing less than the law of God, which according to the New Testament is love. We must love each other, but even above that, we must love God. We must exalt God. We must, we must honor God. We must lift up the name of Jesus. And then as we love others, we will be showing forth love to God as well. So we are not to be lawless people. We are to be people of the law of God. It's the Antichrist that is lawless. Do what you want to do regardless of who it hurts. He's also called the son of destruction. And again, we've seen how the spirit of the Antichrist has brought about destruction of towns, of buildings, of stores, of lives in our world today. Again, the Antichrist will even do more to destroy things than we have seen in the past few months. Paul connects the revealing of the Antichrist to his leading a coming rebellion. Now, if you were with us last week, I concluded the program by saying, I believe that as believers, we are about to experience the greatest revival that this world has ever known. I believe it's on its way. I believe we're going to see the Holy Spirit poured out upon more people than ever before. But I also know that whenever the Antichrist sets up his kingdom, he is going to rebel against anything or any thought or anybody who even mentions God, who even says the name Jesus, or whoever calls upon the Holy Spirit. The Antichrist is going to rebel against that and he is going to have filled so many people with his hatred, with his lying, with his destruction that he himself probably will sit in the temple of God 
as he plans to do, and not go forth, he will have enough demonic forces operating with him and for him that they will take care of destroying anybody who even mentions the law of God. He will have proclaimed himself to be God and he will tear down, destroy, kill anybody who tries to say otherwise. Now we know that our God, Jehovah God, seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The Antichrist will also seek worshipers. But those people will be the ones who have sold their souls to the devil, thinking that they will get rewarded for it. But again, pleasure often lasts a very short time. And that will be the case with those who have sold out to Satan. They may have fun for a little bit, but it'll soon come to an end. And their reward will be punishment in hell because of their having sold out to the enemy. Well, like it was mentioned in Matthew and Mark that there would be false Christ, people pretending to be Christ, there will also be signs and wonders that are brought about that will even help to deceive even more people that the Antichrist is the Messiah. But again, those signs and their, those wonders will soon evaporate and the real Antichrist will show himself as to who he really is and it won't be a pretty sight at all. Again, God forbid that any one of us viewing this program ever comes in contact with the actual Antichrist in any way and that we right now declare war on the Antichrist spirit by preaching and teaching and witnessing who Jesus really is. So the Antichrist can be called a madman. He can be called a dictator. He's definitely diabolical and he's going to be a world leader. And I don't know just when it is Jesus is going to catch us away, but very soon after that, the Antichrist will be making his way forward as a worldwide leader. Faye, let's go to the Old Testament and see what we find out from Daniel. If you would read Daniel chapter 8, verses 23, 24, and 25. Daniel 8, beginning at verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. Now, the last part that Miss Faith read is very important for us to understand. When the Antichrist makes his appearance on the scene and even through the work that his spirit is doing right now, he is going to call himself a peacemaker. And yes, indeed, he is going to even make peace with the Jewish people and the people who are currently their enemies. He's going to actually do that. And everybody said, well, that would be really good. Except it's all deception. 
It's a false forefront that he puts up. And it won't be long until the Jewish people will recognize the fact, hey, this is not the Messiah. This is a fake. This is a pretender. And we want nothing to do with him. And so whenever the Jewish people arrive at that point, that's when the great tribulation will break out. And the last three and a half years of the seven years of tribulation will be horrible, especially for the Jewish people. It'll be horrible for everybody, but especially the Jewish people. They will turn against the Antichrist, and the Antichrist definitely will turn against them. So he's going to come like a light. He's going to come promising peace, but it's not going to be permanent peace. It's only long enough to wrap people up in his hand and grip them and squeeze the very life out of them. His plan for world peace is a facade, not real at all. Again, the nations must realize that. Whenever the Antichrist comes, the very first ones, or at least it seems the first one that he's going to attack, are the leaders of the various nations, and he's going to take control of all the different nations. And there will be borderlines between the nations. But the Antichrist will be able to go across those borderlines and open up the borders and rule the whole world from his one position. That's what the Antichrist is going to do. That's what the spirit of the Antichrist is already trying to bring about. But again, we are not going to be deceived by the Antichrist nor by his spirit, but we're going to hold on to God. We're going to believe God not only for our own salvation, but we're going to believe God for the salvation of our families because the Word of God says we can claim our yes. families. We're going to claim the salvation of all of our, our church members, not just the church members of Revelation of the Word, but the church members of all true churches. We are claiming them for Jesus Christ and for them not to be deceived by the Antichrist spirit, nor definitely by the Antichrist himself. But we find that Daniel is saying here that the Antichrist is going to hide himself under a pretense. But the real individual is fierce, he's strong, and he has the ability to discern beyond normal human beings. So he's going to have an ability beyond the normal, natural human being because he's going to be filled with the spirit of the devil. But he cannot measure up, no matter how hard he tries, to the spirit of the living God. And we will be in heaven with God, with the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Antichrist is doing his thing. But for anybody who believes in God however they find God during the tribulation period, they will have to give their life for the cause of Christ. But it'll be worth it, folks. So, again, I don't want anybody left behind that's viewing this program. But just in case somebody is left behind, immediately turn to God, even though it means being murdered, being crucified, being killed in some way or another, it still will be worth it knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because the time is going to come that Jesus is not just going to come in air, but he's going at the end of the seven years return all the way to the earth. And that glorious appearance is going to be far beyond his first appearance here on earth. He's not going to be a babe in a manger, but he's going to be the king of all kings. And at that name, 
the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord and all evil, including Satan himself, will be eventually cast into a lake of fire for all eternity, not us. Praise God. Do you have prayer requests? Please call or write to us. You can support Revelation of the Word by first praying for God's anointing to be on this ministry. If you feel led to send a financial offering, you can send your gift to Revelation of the Word Ministries, 205 Liberty Lane, Madison, Tennessee, 37115. Everyone is invited to visit Revelation of the Word Church. Call, email, or write the Neals for more information. Now, back to Revelation of the Word. The Bible says that the meek shall inherit the earth. And whenever Jesus makes that glorious appearance at the end of the tribulation period, he is going to set up his kingdom here on earth, and it's going to be for a thousand years. And during that time, he's going to rule and reign, and of course, it'll be a kingdom of peace. Well, here's the, well, all of it's exciting, but here's <laughs> some exciting news. We're going to be right here with him. We're not going to stay up in heaven after those seven years. We're going to return with Jesus all the way to the earth, and we will be a part of the millennial kingdom that's taking place here on earth. And all sin is going to eventually be done away with. And Satan's going to be cast into the lake of fire. And there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And we'll get to all of that at some point in our study. But right now, I just want you to know, folks, we've got our best days ahead. Regardless of what the world's doing, We've got our best days ahead because we know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now then, real quick like, I want to say thank you to all of those who support this program. We appreciate it so very much. God bless you in abundance, and he will and does. But also, I want to encourage you to give to this TV station, WHTN. This is one of the most Godly places that I know other than a, an actual church. This place teaches and preaches the Word of God. Yes. And so I encourage you to support WHTN. And when you do, you're actually supporting us as well. And remember, folks, God loves you. And we do too. We really do. 